be seated. God is good all the time. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Christ on this gorgeous Sunday morning. Did you know this is the last Sunday of winter? That's by the calendar. That's official. I, I'm not going to comment on weather anymore. We, I got you in trouble the last time, so I'm not going to do that again. Uh, so it's a, it's, it's a privilege to be here. This is a special Sunday. We at Fields United Methodist Church have several Girl Scout troops that meet here on a weekly basis, and, and some of those troops have even helped out with our Tuesday night suppers and do things throughout the week. And, and so we wanted to recognize them. This is Girl Scout Sunday, and for all the Girl Scouts in our midst, and would like to do this first. Would, would all the active Girl Scouts please stand up, and daisies and all those? Okay, Caroline. How about... I'll, I'll have other people stand up with you, too. How about anybody who's ever been a Girl Scout? Please stand up. There you go. See, there's a lot of people. Uh, you may be seated. Girl Scouts is, is an, an incredible organization, and it, it strengthens not only uh, 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 the, civic, the civic spirit in, in, in the girls' hearts, but also their faith journey, too. And uh, we are... We, are, we feel privileged to have the Girl Scouts in our midst here, and, and the girls will be doing the offering, and, and you've met some in the ushering, and say hello to them, and welcome them here. Uh, and, and welcome also to, to their families as well. Last night we had our silent auction. We did pretty well. We did over, well, we did exactly $2,000 as of last night, and some has been added this morning. Uh, there are a couple of items that still need to be auctioned off down the hallway, and so if you'd like to take a look at those in the fellowship hall, please do so. You put your name down and your telephone number. If you want it, we'll be sure to call you. Uh, but it, it was a great thing. Uh, a reminder, our, the fifth Sunday special offering will be going towards uh, the mission, our 2014 mission trip as well, so keep that, keep that in mind. Uh, roast beef dinner tickets. If you'd like them, uh, they, they are being sold between services, so if you want to get here a little bit early, you can do that. Uh, Sharon. Okay, just grab that, phone, that mic. And all right. Good morning. I wanted to invite all of you to come to our mission committee meeting on Saturday, March 29th. It's at 9 a.m., and we're also going to have breakfast. Um, it's been said that mission is the heart of the church, and we need new members, and we need your help, and we need your vision in continuing to help people in our church, in our community, and throughout the world. So I hope that um, you'll come and check out what we're all about. If you have any questions, just let me know, and I hope to answer them for you. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. You don't have to be a member of Field United Methodist Church to be part of the mission team either, by the way. You don't have to be an adult either. So you youth who want to get involved in the, in the mission of the church, you're welcome to come too, and we will feed you as well. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have plenty of stuff going. So uh, with that, again, note everything in the bolt and a lot happening in the, in the life of our congregation. Uh, I think it's time to worship, Chuck. Okay, Tom. Awesome job last night, $2,000, amen, 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 amen. That should cover gas to, what, Michigan for all the vans? <laughs> Even though that's probably the other way. But uh, missions are important, and I heard, a, I heard a saying one time, and it was actually just an everyday average Joe telling me, he says, you know what? People talk about going on mission trips and going out of the country and going other places and even doing what we at Fields do here, going to other states within our own country, and that is important. But you know what? Sometimes a mission field isn't as far as the person that's next to you, amen? Or it could be the person that lives next door to you that you haven't seen in a while, that you saw maybe in the summertime, but with this bad winter, you just haven't checked on them or... or, or Whatever. So missions are important. Missions are the heart of the church, as Sharon said, and it is important. And when we do that, we are blessing the name of the Lord when we come in the spirit of oneness that is in Christ. Amen. 
Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you and we ask for your presence to rain down upon us right now. Send down a presence so powerful that we have no question when we leave today that we were in the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We wave your banner of praise. We wave your banner that says, I surrender to you. And in that surrendering comes victory. And we ask all these wonderful things. In the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. Dick's going to start us off with scripture this morning. Stand with us as we sing, Blessed Be Your Name. Here we go. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out of, turn back to praise. And the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name. The Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Here we go. Blessed be your name when the sun shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Every blessing, every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness blows in the dim Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Blessed be your name. Sing it again. You give 
Anytime, anywhere, anyhow. And as the verse says, my heart chooses to say, whether you give and take away, blessed be your name. Let's sing that again. You give and take away. You give and take away. Why? My heart will choose to say, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Amen. Greet somebody in the name of the Lord. Yeah, we're called winging it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think he was yeah. turning you up because you came on. And went, I know. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, Kathy's loud. Good morning. Good morning. And then again, it might not be working. Good morning to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you be patient as we deal with technical Aww, difficulties. Oh, isn't that sweet? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The kind of faith it takes to climb on this boat I'm in. I took the trashing waves to step out of my comfort zone into the way unknown where Jesus is. And he's holding out his hand. But the waves are calling up my name. They laugh at me, reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed. The waves are keep on telling me time and time again, boy, you'll never win, you'll never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story, and the voice of truth says do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says this is for my glory, out of all the voices calling out to me. I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth. Oh, what I would do to have the kind of strength it takes to stand before a giant with just a sling and on throne, surrounded by the sound of warriors shaking in their armor. Never stand the stand, but the giant's calling out my name and he laughs at me, reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed. The giant keeps on telling me time and time again, boy, you'll never win, you'll never win. But the voice of truth 
tells me a different story, and the voice of truth says, do not be afraid, and the voice of truth says, this is for my glory, out of all the voices calling out to me, I will choose to listen and be the voice. The voice of truth tells me a different story, and the voice of truth says, Do not be afraid. And the voice of truth says, This is for my glory, and all the voices calling out to me. I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth. Voice of truth. sermon this morning is going to be about belief and you know David really had that belief and that yes, faith that with that sling in the stone he was going to slay giants and we all have giants don't we, we all have those things that just seem so insurmountable uh, that nothing uh, would would shatter that nothing would nothing would help us through but you know with that sling God's word um, our faith can move mountains and move those things apart so we can grow closer to God and with each other. Uh, uh, the giants only stand as long uh, 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 as your faith uh, ceases to kick in. Once that, once that faith kicks in, boy, there's no more giants. Uh, there's no more insurmountable things uh, in our lives. And so that we, we, we base our life on faith. And that's what we believe. Well, this morning, uh, it is a joy. It's a joy to have all the Girl Scouts and the families here this morning. It's a, it is a true joy to be in God's house. It was a hoot last night at the silent auction, a lot of, a lot of fun. There's a little bit of competition going on, but that's okay in God's house. I mean, we're allowed to do that, but it's, a, it's just great. And I wanted to give uh, praise and thanksgiving to to this congregation. And whether you're a member or, or a visitor or 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 someone for here for the first time, uh, it is a joy for me as a pastor to be a part of such an enlivened uh, spirit uh, that, we, that we feel here in this congregation. And so I just wanted to thank everybody for that. It, it is truly a gift to be in this house this day. Uh, the, the joy of, of new beginnings, the, the joy of, of being in, in, in God's creation. But in the midst of all the joys, there are many concerns that, we, that weigh upon our thoughts and and deep within our souls, so please note those on the prayer list, and, and I have many that I'd like to add to that list. If you would please add Jill White to your prayer list. Her, uh, her mother, Judy White, just returned home from Florida after a hiatus and has a cold, and I said it serves you right for being in Florida for three months, but, uh, but do pray for Jill. She's having surgery on Tuesday. Also for Don Smith, who's in the hospital, for Susan Campbell, for Frank, for Lisa, uh, for Missy and Chrissy, for Sarah, uh, for Barbara, for Dick uh, Venkol and Ron Stanfield, and the Takax family, Betty, is that someone that, that you brought up? Takis, the Takis family. Are there other joys or concerns of the church here this morning? Uh, both a joy and a concern. Uh, one of my professors uh, was out sick last week, and they were afraid that it might be colon cancer. Mm. Um, those tests came back negative, but still prayers for recovery and figuring out whatever was wrong. Prayers for recovery and healing and wisdom.
I have a, a concern. If we can please pray for the Thomas family. It's my best friend. Um, her dad has been dealing with a lot of heart problems over, I think, probably the last year or two. And recently he had a surgery, I think about two weeks ago, over at the Cleveland Clinic. We thought it went well, but they found internal bleeding yesterday. Mm. So he's going to, um, we're getting, giving a lot of blood, and he might be going in for another surgery on Tuesday if everything turns out. If, but if we can please keep the Thomas family in our prayers. We'll keep the Thomas family and you as well, Nicole. Are there others? Please pray for my cousin Elaine, for her daughters and their families. She was very sick, hernia, and then she was having problems with her heart and lungs. She was in the ICU. At first she started at Lake West, and then they said there was nothing they could do, more they could do for her. So they sent her to University Hospital for surgery, and she was in the ICU for a few days. So please pray for my cousin. Prayers for Elaine. On the other side. First off, I have a joy to uh, a friend of mine's friend that I have just uh, recently met. They just celebrated their 10th wedding anniversary, so I thought that right. was pretty cool. And then um, I have some general prayers that I need, and so many that I had to write them down. Uh, a co worker of mine, Michelle, she needs desperate uh, for pending surgery that is unfortunately necessary for a friend of mine, Mark Johnson's mother, who is in the hospital. Dad and my stepfather, just general prayers of concern. Thank you. Making your run. I would like to pray for uh, Dana Bias. He's, um, I think he lives in Columbia Station, but he's a friend of my son, my kids. They grew up together, and he's waiting for a, a liver transplant but we hope he makes it in time because he's got a, a real bad spleen infection and they need to do it within 10 months, so we're hoping the liver comes through so real soon. Okay. Dana? Dana, bias. Prayers for Dana. Let's go to God in silent prayer. God of grace and God of glory, on your people, pour your power. Pour your power of faith, of healing, of hope, of everlasting life upon all of those who are in need this day. Lord God, you heard our hearts uh, moan as we lift up these folks to you in prayer, and we just pray that you intercede uh, in their lives uh, so that they may be healed and may come to know you even more completely in their lives. Lord, uh, we gather here with joy. We're, we're joyful because of the scouts being here. We're joyful because of the spirit that has been enlivened in this place. We're joyful because of our family, our friends, our community, our country, and our world. Lord God, the creation you have given us is absolutely amazing, Lord God, and we come here uh, to just give you thanks for all the great things that you have done in our lives. And Lord, at the same time, we acknowledge that we have fallen so far short of the people you would have us to be, that we have stumbled and we have fallen, and we have failed more times than we can keep count. But Lord God, you keep lifting us up and giving us your grace, your hope, and your everlasting presence, Lord, that we may get up and try it yet one more time. And Lord, we give you thanks for not giving up on us, um, and, and we pray your forgiveness upon our lives this day. Lord God, we pray for those that throughout your world need your presence, especially those families and, and countries that are affected by this 
uh, Flight 777, Lord God, we, we pray your watch care upon ev everyone involved there. We pray for all those throughout your world that are besieged by war and violence and uncertain political futures, Lord God. We pray your, your eternal presence with them. Lord God, we pray for our great nation and our leaders, that our leaders may lead with your word firmly upon their lips. And Lord God, we pray for our civic leaders. We pray for those who keep us safe. We pray for those who, who keep the lights going. We pray for those who uh, are plowing the snow. And Lord, we just hope we don't need them anymore this year. But Lord, uh, we know they're out there and working awful hard uh, that we may... Uh, drive safely through the streets of this community. Uh, Lord God, we pray for those who are traveling, travel blessings upon them. We pray for those who are, who are homebound, hospitalized, those who, who are recovering from surgeries and those who anticipate surgeries in the upcoming week, Lord. We pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones, and especially we lift up to you the Takis family, Lord. May their mourning and loss turn to joy with certain hope of everlasting life for the ones they have lost. Lord God, we, we pray for Jill and John and Larry, for Brianna, for Don and Susan and Frank, for Lisa, for Martha and Betty, for Carol, for Missy and Chrissy, for Sarah, for Jason, for Nancy, for Carrie, for Michelle, for Ron and Dick, for Dana, for Marty, for Barbara, the Thomas family, and for all of those others, Lord God, we mention to you by voice and deep within our souls, Lord God, and we just pray the anointing of your Holy Spirit to be upon each and every one, that you may heal their bodies, nourish their faith, Lord, set them all rejoicing, knowing that you are with them now, even to the end of the age. Lord God, we also thank you for the privilege of coming here and, and serving you, not only with our hands, but with our funds, Lord God, and we pray the your blessing upon the gifts we now lay before you. Uh, bless them and multiply them so that your ministry may continue uh, through our work here. Uh, Lord, we, we now pray for each other and for ourselves that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you've begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now offer our tithes and offerings.
morning. Good morning. Hi, Austin. I like your boots. Those are pretty cool. Well, yesterday I was thinking, oh, tomorrow's Sunday. I better come up with something for children's chat. And I had read Pastor Tom's devotional earlier in the week, and I was thinking, goodness, what, what are we going to talk about? Well, then Ben came home from an afternoon with his papa, right? And he was singing a song. Do you want to help me sing a song? And it helped me. I thought, oh, I know what we can talk about. You want to help me? No? Okay. Well, maybe you know this song. It's about a little bunny. Little bunny foo-foo hopping through the forest. Anybody know this song? Cindy, no? Scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. Down came the good fairy and she said, Little bunny foo-foo, I don't want to see you. Scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. I'll give you three, Caroline, do you know this song? Three chances. And then I'll turn you into a, a what? A goon. Well, the next day, little bunny foo-foo hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. Down came the good fairy and she said, little bunny foo-foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. I'll give you two more chances and then I'll turn you into a goon. So the next day, little bunny foo-foo hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. Down came the good fairy and she said, little bunny foo-foo, I don't want to see you scooping up those field mice and bopping them on the head. I will give you one more chance before I turn you into a goon. So the next day, little bunny foo-foo hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. Down came the good fairy and she said, Little bunny foo-foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. I've given you three chances and now I'll turn you into a goon and poof! Little bunny foo-foo was turned into a goon. Again, you want to do it again, Austin? <laughs> Maybe we'll do it during, during junior church. Well, anyhow, it got me to thinking, oh, goodness, that poor little bunny foo-foo, he only got three chances to, to change his behavior, and then that was it. He was turned into a goon. How many times have you done something wrong or made a bad choice, and your mom said, all right, this is your last chance? Have you ever heard that before? <laughs> have you ever heard that before? <laughs> yeah, I think. And then she gives you another chance and another chance and another chance, but you don't tell her that she's given you like five, right? Because she's already lost count. So as children, we get lots of chances, don't we? Because our parents knew that the day that we were born, we would make lots and lots and lots of mistakes, that we were not perfect. But our moms and dads love us so much that they teach us and they have patience with us, even though we mess up and we make those mistakes. What do I always say to you? that there's nothing you can do and there's nothing you can say that will ever make me stop what? Loving you, right? And that's how your moms and dads feel about you. Well, it's the same way that God feels about us. Even as adults, we make mistakes all the time. But we get lots and lots of chances with God. I don't think he's ever turned anyone into goons, but he's God, right? He could do anything, so we better watch out. I'm <laughs> just kidding. All right, let's have a quick prayer. Bow our heads. Lord, thank you for not turning us into goons and for giving us second and third and hundreds and hundreds of chances. Help us each day to ask for forgiveness and be filled with your glory so that every morning we rise as another day to get it right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man, I would have been a goon a long time ago. <laughs> Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the Mold us, fear.
Lord God, may your Holy Spirit fall upon us this morning that we may be filled with your hope and renewal as the scripture is read and proclaimed. May our lives be transformed by your grace and your grace alone. Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen. Scripture lesson this morning is from John's Gospel, the third chapter. I think we're going to start in verse 14. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world may be saved through him. Martin Luther called it the gospel in miniature. Others call it the touchdown verse because it always seemed to show up in an end zone of a professional football game on Sunday afternoon. And then as I'm looking at my notes, I'm also seeing that it's 316. That's the date today. An amazing text. This is perhaps, John 3.16 is perhaps the best known verse of all of Scripture. There are more devotionals and texts read about or written about John 3.16 than any other verse in all of Scripture. It's a word of comfort. It's a word of healing. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that everyone, that's that word everyone, in other words, everyone, God's an inclusive God, isn't God? Everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. God's will or God's intention for our life is right here in this text. Last week as we began the season of Lent and we began uh, with the first ingredient of change, we talked about profession. And, and to have a profession of faith and know what you're professing is profoundly important. But here, number two ingredient for the season of change is belief. We are called to believe that God's intention for us in our life is not for us to suffer, not for us to have pain, not for us to be brokenhearted in any way, shape, or form. God does not want us broken in body or in spirit. Unfortunately, our own human condition uh, allows for those things to happen in our lives, but God does not want those things to happen. i got to tell you a story. When I began in ministry just a few years ago, I visited a hospital in Durham, North Carolina, and this person was, was very, very sick and, and very, very upset that, that God, for some reason, um, just dismissed her as a worthless vessel. And we talked for a long time, and we, and we concluded that, no, that God is here standing in the midst, standing in the gap for you, uh, offering hope and assurance, and will give you strength to get through those difficult times. So in walks her sister. Now, this person since passed. But the sister looks at the, the sister in bed and says, I guess that's God's will that you're there. You know... This Irishman's blood started to boil and my Irish eyes were starting to uh, shine because I said, why are you saying that to this woman? It's not God's will that she's laying. It's not God's will at all. If I wasn't the pastor, I would have slugged her. No, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> but it happens. We hear that all the time. It's God's will. It's God's will. But, but we need to know that God's will for us, God's intention for us is to live a life that is that is fully surrounded by God's grace and God's love and God's healing. I mean, that's what God's will for us is. And also to have that deep, uh, abiding, and eternal relationship with God and with each other. 
For Christ came into the world that we may live this life of joy and peace. I mean, that's the hope. That's why we're here. And sometimes our life doesn't go in the direction we would like to have it. And sometimes we do hurt. I don't know about you, but every once in a while I get up out of bed and it's, I'm, I'm a little, you know, sore. Probably not there, but here, every, every once in a while. And I know that, that, that my body is fallible and, and these things don't often work. And you know what? And that's our human condition. But God looks beyond all that stuff and says, I'm going to be with you. I didn't cause all that stuff, and I'm going to be with you through it. You see, it's all about believing. God did not do things in this world to punish people. God didn't do natural disasters or, or disasters of human origin um, to punish for testimony to that, look at Luke 13 uh, tonight and, and read uh, what, what Jesus has to say about those disasters that happened in people's lives. It wasn't to punish them. God is here to see us through. It's about believing. Every time Jesus turned around, he was talking about believing. To Martha, Martha lost her, her brother. And Jesus said, Martha, do you believe? Do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life? That all who live and believe in me, even though they die, yet they will live? And all who live and believe in me will never die? Martha, do you believe this? Because if you believe this one fact, you will know the joy of believing. Or how about Thomas? Now, we'll visit Thomas a little bit after Easter, but, but here's Thomas. Remember when Thomas was out playing golf and the disciples were in and Jesus come visiting the disciples? The disciples saw the resurrected one. Thomas got back from his round of golf and said, I don't believe you all until I see the holes in the hand of Jesus and put my finger in the hole and in his side. I'm not going to believe. Well, then Jesus comes back and said, Thomas, Okay, here I am. Go ahead. Put, the fi put your finger in the hole in my hand and in my side. And Thomas says perhaps one of the grandest professions of faith that has ever been said, my Lord and my God, and Jesus said, Thomas, all right. But blessed are those who believe, who have not seen. You see, believing brings us to a little different plateau. That's God's will for us, to believe. God's will for us is to turn back to God. That's called repentance. We may not know it sometimes, but we have our back to God more often than we could count. And God's saying, just turn around, even a little bit. And see my glory in your life. That's God. Perhaps, though, my vision of God may be different than some. You see, I don't envision God. I don't envision Jesus Christ as this stern old man looking at me, waiting for me to make a mistake. I don't envision this 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 person who never seems to lighten up. I don't envision this person who never smiles. A couple of things that Jesus never uttered. We always do it this way, disciples. We've never done it like that in the church. Here's a couple other. Well, you know, my Father in heaven hates those people. Never heard that. Or here's one. That I will bet you, sorry, Bishop, if you're watching this this morning on the web, because we're not supposed to gamble as Methodists. I just wanted to put that out there. But I'll bet you that you will never find in the Old Testament or the New Testament these words that we are called to love the sinner and hate the sin. Jesus never said that. God's prophets never said that. Because God's love is not condescending love. God's love is eternal love. 
God's love is in spite of everything uh, that we have done. You see, Jesus, and we were struggling with this in our Bible study Thursday night, and you're all welcome to come, 7 o'clock. Remember we were talking about how Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and the scribes, and they're so set on human law, on Mosaic law, that says you have to do this, and if you don't do this, then you're really not followers of God. Jesus despised folks. Did despise the leaders of the synagogue who restricted faith so much in human law and at the same time forgetting God's law. God's law is pretty simple. Love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength and love your neighbors yourself. Jesus is saying, what does that have to do with how you clean your pots after dinner? That's in the scripture, by the way. Pans, I think they use. You see, God is calling us in a little different direction. For God says, do not forsake my people for the expense, at the expense of your law. Jesus says something else too. Jesus calls us to be kingdom builders and not church builders. For centuries we've been building these huge, magnificent buildings and people have been coming and we forgot something. We forgot that God has called us beyond the buildings, beyond the walls, beyond the door of the church to reach out to the least, the lost, the estranged, the homeless, the marginalized. And we are called to believe in the calling that God has placed upon our lives to do just that. So to believe is important, to believe that we do have eternal life when we believe. It's always God's option. But that's the joy. So that is John 3.16. So as volumes continue to be written on John 3.16, somehow John 3.17 has been lost in the shuffle. Kind of like a brother twice removed. I have no idea what that means, but it really sounds bad. John 3.17. May be as powerful as John 3.16, but maybe even more comforting. So the question is: have you ever had self-doubt? Have you ever felt like you are not worthy of God's love? Have you ever felt that you're not worthy of someone else's love? Have you ever been made to feel guilty because someone has judged you wrongly, or even rightly for that matter, or just judged at all? Have you ever felt that way? Has anybody ever felt like you just want to crawl under the table and not come back out? Have you ever lost sleep with worry? Probably not. But maybe so. I see some heads shaking. The affirmation of God's love is profound. And when we believe that God's love will change all things and change our lives, even the gates of hell, won't last. To understand the gift of eternal life is our comfort in, in this ever-changing world in which we live is a good thing to know. But here's the thing that just shot off the page at me this week. I couldn't get out of my head. John 3.17 Maybe I'll go to the Browns game and hold it up in the end zone. That God did not send his son into the world 
to condemn the world. Did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but so that the world may be saved through him. I think this is a verse that needs a little bit of unpacking here before lunchtime. This is something a little bit different than maybe we've heard before. And it might even provide even a little bit more comfort. We don't worship a condemning God. Here's St. Paul, for example, in Romans chapter 7. Paul says, I don't know why I do the things I know that are wrong, but I keep on doing it, and I don't know why. I think that's Romans 7, 18, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know why. Have you ever done that to either? Have you ever kept doing stuff that you know is contrary to what God would have us to do and we keep on doing it and we don't know why? Have you ever failed at anything? No matter how hard you try, you fail. And when you fail over and over and over and over again, you just don't quite see the light at the end of the tunnel. God knows we try. God knows we fail. But the truly good news that we celebrate this morning, that God loves us in spite of our failures, in spite of what we do, in spite of what we have done, God will love us over and over and over and over again. Saints, that is grace. And this humble vessel is going to preach grace with my last breath. We're here by grace. We live by grace. We are offered eternal life by grace. You see, God's not a condemning God. God didn't come here to tell us how bad a people we are. Quite the contrary. God is not peering around every corner of our lives waiting for us to fail. God celebrates when we succeed. And God lifts us up when we don't. That's grace. God didn't send Jesus into the world so that we can just wallow in our own self-doubt or in our sin, for that matter, our anger, or even our failures to live up to some preconceived notion of what others think we need to be and how we should live. You see, saints, belief is critically important. That's why Jesus says, believe. Maybe that's why God through Christ says, do not judge, because judging is not only physically and spiritually draining, but judging offers no grace. Human judgment offers no grace. You see, we're called to offer grace as much as God does. God is a God of grace, and a God of glory, a God of second chances, third chances, fourth chances, even more than what Bunny Foo Foo got. God will offer us as many chances as it takes for us to finally come to terms that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. You see, God's going to give us that hope, and God's going to give us that grace. God's going to give us whatever it takes 
and be patient with us for as long as it takes for us to finally get it right. We are called to believe, mainly to save us from ourselves, our own shortcomings, our own self-doubts, our own lack of belief, so that we may be enabled to fully rely on God's grace and God's mercy and God's power in our life. Believing will change us, will transform us. And change is about understanding God's intention in our lives, who God is and whose God is. Turn to God. Accept God's grace. Not only accept it, but believe it unconditionally. For God's grace is without bounds. Lord God, we give you thanks for offering us grace upon grace upon grace, opportunity upon opportunity upon opportunity. Lord God, we give you thanks for lifting us up from the abyss of our sin, the abyss of our failures, cleaning us off and setting us free to try it one more time. Bless us, Lord, as we leave this place. May we go strengthened by your resolve, your spirit, and your grace. All we got to do is believe. Amen. Amen. Tom said, uh, have you ever gotten to that point where you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel or you feel like you're failing continually? I got one word for everybody. Statistics. I, I can't stand that class. I'm in it. I'm confessing before you that it's terrible, that I'll never use it, unless I'm going to be a mathematician. But I feel like that, Tom. I feel like, why are you putting me through this class? And uh, there's so much more, of course, to the meaning of his message. But I tried not to laugh out loud when he said, do you ever feel that you're not getting anywhere? Statistics. Oh, my goodness. The probability of me liking that class is not good. We started today with talking about missions. We started talking about missions being the heart of the church. Amen? You see it all the time. You see it on the news. You see it when hurricanes or tornadoes devastate landscapes. And you see these people that don't have a hope on their face, that they just look lost. Yet somewhere deep down inside, they might not utter the words, Jesus. But we see it through their countenance that they know that he is their only hope. That he is their only way, truth, and life. That they're going to make it through this. That they have to rebuild. That they have to start over. And it's unfortunate, but when we come to those crossroads in our lives, that we realize what Tom said. John 3, 17, that Christ didn't do this to us to condemn us or to keep us down, but to make us stronger, amen? God's shelter is all we need when we are amidst the storm, and we've seen plenty of them this winter. Stand with us as we sing, Jesus, hope of the nations. Father God, we thank you for being our hope. We thank you for being our everything. Continue to remind us, as Tom said, whose we are. We have been bought with a price. We have been paid for. Hallelujah. And it is much to be thankful for. Forgive me when I don't appreciate that. Forgive us when we don't emulate your salt and your light to those around us that need it most. Be with us now as we exalt your holy name. Heaven's hope on earth. Jesus, light in the darkness. Jesus.
Jesus, truth in each circumstance. You are the source of heaven's light on earth. In history, you lived and died. You broke the chains. You rose to life. You are the hope living in us. You are the rock. In whom we trust, you are the light shining for all the world to see. You rose from the dead, conquering fear, a prince of peace, drawing us near. Jesus, our hope, living for all the world to see. your hope. Here we go. Jesus, hope of the nations. Jesus, comfort of all who mourn. You are the source of heaven's hope on earth. Jesus, light in the darkness. Jesus, truth in each circumstance. The source of heaven's light on earth. In history, you lived and died. You broke the chains. You rose to life. You are the hope living in us. You are the rock in whom we trust. You are the light shining for all the world to see. Rose from the dead, conquering fear, our Prince of Peace, drawing us near, Jesus our hope, living for all who will receive, cause you are the hope, living in us, you are the rock, in whom we trust, you are the light, shining for all. from the dead, conquering fear, the Prince of Peace, drawing us near, Jesus our hope, living for all the world to see, Lord we believe, Lord we believe, Lord we believe. Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We clap unto you, Father God, for you are worthy of a thousand applauses. You are worthy of so much more than we could ever give, ask, or receive. And we ask that you allow us to go this week and always bearing the cross of Christ upon our hearts and upon our countenance. May everyone have a blessed week in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen.